G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Pixel Math to produce the 4X palette. I've talked about the 4X palette before, but I'm gonna show you in detail how to use Pixel Math to construct uh, an image such as this one. So let's set the scene here because obviously this is a five minute Friday, so I've done a lot already so that we can quickly get to the point of the video. I've got three images here, my S203 and HA, and they're all of NGC 6188, the fighting dragons of Ara. And you can see the dragons here and the egg, the dragon egg down the bottom here with this nice oxygen shell around, although it does have some contribution from HA to it. And to each image, I have done quite a lot already. I've dynamic cropped, dynamic background extraction, MLT for noise reduction, and then I've used generalized hyperbolic stretch to stretch them all and remove the stars. And I used GHS first to stretch HA, and then I kind of matched O3 and S2 so that the overall brightness was pretty much the same, and then worked on the background to, to make sure that the backgrounds were roughly the same as well, so that they'll match nicely. Um, and because I've taken the time to do that, if I just use channel combination and just straight out do an SHO image and a HOO image, they already start to look quite nice, especially the, the SHO image, because things are already quite balanced. And both images have uh, their advantages and both look quite nice. The oxygen shell being mostly oxygen is quite a bit more apparent in HOO than it is in SHO. Um, so that's an interesting observation. Uh, but we can do better than this, and, and we'll do it using pixel math, the whole point of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of my SHO image and add half of my HOO image, and I'll call the image test. And the reason I've done half and half is two reasons. They add up to one, and they're equal. So it's taken an equal piece of SHO and an equal piece of HOO, and added them together so that the, the overall maximum value is going to be one. So it doesn't get any brighter. And that, that's kind of important. So, um, and it's done this every pixel, each pixel one at a time. It's, it's taken the pixels from the other two images and put them together half and half to produce a new pixel. And it, no pixels got any brighter because they, they add to one. Okay, and you can see the image looks quite different. It's kind of taken a bit of both. So we've ended up with some orange and yellows rather than the, the greens um, and yellows from here and the reds and blues from here. Um, but there's no reason I had to do half and half. I could do, say, 80% SHO, 20% HOO. So this will look quite a bit more like the SHO image now. Um, so I could keep going with that process. But what if I didn't want every pixel to just have the identical contribution. What if I wanted to use my data to decide how much SHO goes in uh, at certain pixel values and how much HOO comes in? So it won't be constant anymore. And this is where the idea of 4X comes in. What it's actually going to do is it's going to look at these images here and going to use that data to decide how much SHO and how much SA, uh, how much HOO are combined together. So what we need to do is create two new images, which are going to represent those numbers I just had, that instead of being fixed numbers uh, of 0 0.8 and 0 0.2, I might give the numbers a name, F, and we're going to call this one not F. Excuse that loud bang if you heard it, that was me knocking my mouse. It's quite a small desk. So I could call this number F and not F. And what the not F basically means is uh, whatever F is, do one minus F, as you saw before, 0 0.8, one minus 0 0.8, 0 0.2. Um, so whatever this F value is, it's gonna take not F here. And that's how it's gonna decide between the SHO and the HOO, how much of each to contribute. Uh, but this F value isn't going to be a fixed number anymore. It's going to be based on our data. And let's look at how we can do that. 
So I'm going to create two images. I'm going to take my O3, my actual O3 image, and then I'm going to put it to the power of not O3. So whatever O3 is, basically this is the inverted image of O3. And it's called a power of inverted pixels expression because it's inverted the image and it's taken a power of it. Uh, and I'll call this uh, O, and I'll make it grayscale. Okay, and then let's let's compare what, how does that compare to O? What's this power of inverted pixels done? Well, it's done two things. It's brightened the image overall, but it's also made it more punchy, more contrasty, if you look at the two of them. So that, that's what that power of inverted pixels basically does. It takes the image, makes it a bit brighter, a bit more punchy. So this is going to be uh, one of our images, part of the data that we're going to use in our expression uh, in a moment. But we need one more. So we've got our oxygen. So basically, it's going to look at where is there lots of oxygen and where is there not lots, lots of oxygen. And that's how it's going to make a decision uh, in our 4x expression. So I'll put that down here. I'm also going to create another expression. Rather than being O3, uh, it's going to be HA times O3 and then take the, the not of that, so HA times O3. So it's still a power of inverted pixels. I've got this expression down the bottom here, and then I'm taking the not of that as a power. And what this is going to do, HA times O3, it's looking at where are they both bright, uh, essentially. So I'll call this one HO, HO1, because I've already got a HO down here, and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. So there's this second image, okay? And you can see this one's quite dark because it's only where H and O are both bright. Um, and it's mostly along the back of the dragon here in these residual stars and in the, um, the dragon egg here. Okay, that's where it's mostly bright. So we need both of those to form our 4 axis expression. And our actual 4x expression, I want to get rid of this single RGB now. I want to use all three, RG and B. Our actual expression is O1 times S2. So where this O1 image is bright, I'll move it over here. Where this O1 image is bright, we're mostly going to take our S2 image, the, the pixels of the S2 image. And where it's not bright, so not O1, we're going to take HA. That's all this is saying. Where this image is really bright, we're mostly going to have S2 in those pixels. Where this image is dark, we're mostly going to have HA, which is good because uh, the HA is the cleanest channel. So we're get, these dark areas are mostly going to be nice and clean. And where it's kind of in the middle of brightness, so in this kind of region in here, it's going to have a mixture of both. So the pixels aren't going to get constant amounts of S2 and HA. It's going to vary depending on how bright this image is. So our real data is going to determine how much the mixture of S2 and HA are, which is uh, quite different to how we did the other images. Okay, and in the green channel, same, same kind of concept. I'm going to take HO1 times HA, and then I'm going to take not HO1 times O3. So again, where this HO image is bright, so mostly in the, the, the middle kind of section in here, and particularly along the spine of this dragon here, and in the, the dragon egg here, it's mostly going to take HA in the green channel. And where it's not bright, so around the outside here where it's quite dark, it's going to take mostly O3. And then the, the kind of middle ground, it's going to take a mixture of both. Okay, And then the blue channel is just going to be all O3. And if we have a think about what's happening here, we can see why I keep saying all we're really doing is a combination of SHO and HOO. Because if, if that O1 image is bright, very bright, it's just going to take S. And if HO1 is also very bright, it's going to take H and then O. So it's going to be an SHO image. If O1 is not bright, it's going to take HA. If HO1 is also not bright, it's going to take O and O. So some parts where they're both really bright, we're going to take get an SHO image where it's really dark, a HOO image, and then there's going to be a mixture of the two uh, in between. So it's not a constant 
mixture of them, but essentially it's really just SHO combined with HOO. So it's a really powerful expression, uh, a really nice expression. Let's see what this looks like. I'll call it 4x. And I'll make it RGB. So here's our 4x expression for HO1 and O1. And it's kind of a letdown when you see it the first time. It, it pretty much looks like HOO image. But if you look closely, it's not quite. Where I said on, on that spine of the dragon, that's where HO1 and O1 are brightest. That's where we've got this yellow green. And also in the dragon's egg, you can see it doesn't quite look like the HOO image. It, it, it's got a, a hint of the SHO in it. But we can do better. And that's where why I've already got these O and HOs set up. So let's close 4x. What I've done is I've taken my O1 image here and I've done some more GHS and a few other things with curves and so on to, to really brighten it and boost that contrast even more. Sure, it's brought out more noise, but again, this is just for tone mapping, but it, it's brightened the image up and made it more punchy and contrasty. And you can really see that shell now. And I've done the same thing, more importantly, to HO1 and HO. I've really brightened the HO image and again made it more punchy so you can really see it. And again, that, that was just with GHS and curves. Um, you can play around with that to brighten them up and make them more punchy. So now if I adjust these expressions, instead of O1, I have O and I have HO. So the brighter versions of my um, factors down here and call this one 4x what you'll see is it looks a little different now. There's actually, it's more obvious in this section here that it's taking some SHO, and it's more obvious in here that it's taking some SHO. So it, it now looks quite a bit different to the HOO image. And we can work on it. We can really quickly do some curves work. I can boost the saturation. I can play with the hue a little bit, so let's do it. So what I'm going to do is just take some of these blues and, and make them a little bit more, um, just to bring them out a little bit more. And I'm going to boost this orange yellow quite a bit over here, but I don't, I don't want to do too much to the reds if I can help it in the greens. So I might control them a little bit. There we go. And then we might clip it just a little bit, just so it's that background's not quite so bright. Just clip it just a touch. And then we better put the stars back. So again, we can use pixel math to do that. Single expression here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 4x, and I'm going to add on my HA stars, my O3 stars, and my S2 stars, which are all just sitting down here from StarNet. Um, but if I added those as is, um, and we'll replace the image, watch what happens to the stars. They go crazy bright because it's added all three of them and made them super bright. So I don't want that. So again, this is where this idea of making sure we work carefully with our pixel math so it adds to one and doesn't, and then stays at the same brightness. So because I'm adding three things, I'm going to do a third there, which is about 0 0.33. Now if I do that, my stars will be the brightness I want them to be. Okay, so there's my pixel math for my 4x done. And what I've also done in the background is I've taken my HA and I've done some work with local contrast enhancement and, and some sharpening um, to, to just get a little bit more out of that HA image and I've called it Loom. So I'll do an LRGB combination now so we can see the final image. And we might or might not have to do a little bit of saturation boost uh, whenever we do a LRGB combination. Sometimes we lose a little bit of saturation. Um, that looks not too bad, actually. Maybe a little touch of, of saturation, just a touch. And there we go. So you can see that 4X looks quite a bit different to an SHO and a HOO image. It, it makes it quite unique. Um, 
and I, I really like the palette, uh, but it's all in how you play with these factors down here uh, for your HO and your O when you're working with them. Um, you, you really need to play around with them and, and boost the brightness uh, and the contrast in them to get the maximum out of it. And then you can pull some color out of it um, with the usual curves and, and hue adjustments if you like. Um, but I like how unique it makes it. It does make it quite a different image to a stock standard SHO if you've seen it done to death. Um, yeah, so there's 4X. It's not as scary as it looks. All right, so there's our five minute Friday. At least I hope it was a five minute Friday. Uh, I'll know when I finish the editing here. I assume if you're watching this bit, then it really was a five minute Friday. Um, if you've got this far and you're interested in content like this, please press the subscribe button down the bottom there and the bell. And thanks for watching.